There had been a time when science, mathematics and discovery in general flourished in the Islamic world. Al-Andalus and Abd al-Baghdad in particular are credited for producing some of the greatest minds of the Middle Ages. Though their time has now passed, the legacy of these great Muslim thinkers can be found in scientific and mathematical terms of use today. In this video, we will quickly go through some of the mathematical and scientific terms that came out from Islamic civilization. Let us begin. Algebra. The term comes from the Arabic term al-Jabr, a word first coined by the legendary mathematician Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khawarizmi in his work Hasib al-Jabr wa al-Muqabala, which loosely translates to the settings of the equations which have been broken. In other words, it was a book about solving equations. Speaking of al-Khawarizmi, algorithm. This mathematical term is literally a Latinization of the name al-Khawarizmi. According to R. Johnson, this came to be through the Latin translations of al-Khawarizmi's work, and thus, those who quoted it had spoken in the language of al-Khawarizmi, therefore, algorithm, which further demonstrates the great influence and importance of this great mathematician. Moving on, alkali. Alkali is a substance that has a pH between 8 to 14. Examples of alkali substances include sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, ammonia. Alkali substances are commonly used in polishing and cleaning products. This word is derived from the Arabic word al-qili, which literally means ashes or ash of salt wort plants. Next, we have borax, better known as boron. Boron is a non-metal element with atomic symbol B on the periodic table. Uses of boron include medicine and soldering. The root term boron comes from the boron compound borax, which comes from the Arabic word al buraq or the Persian word burah. Records of Muslims using it go back to at least 700 AD through the works of the Arabian chemist Jabbar ibn Hayyan. Swiftly moving on, alchemy and chemistry. Now this one's interesting for its root origin is debated to either have come from Egypt or Greece. According to one source, however, the Arabs took it from the Greek word chemia, which was later Arabized into alchemia which means the art of transforming metals. Later, the Europeans then took the Arabized word alchemia and Latinized it to alchemy. This word further evolved into a separate word with a different meaning, chemistry, which sounds familiar to the original Greek word. Next on the list is carrot, and no, not the one that you eat. A carat is a unit of measure that is most commonly used today to measure the purity of precious metals, such as gold. The word comes from the Arabic term qirat, which like chemistry, may have been taken from the Greeks. And in this example, the Greek word kirashon, which is a type of fruit. For those wondering what the link is between this fruit and precious metals, well, according to Karpani et al, the seeds of this fruit was used to measure the purity of gold. The more fruit needed, the more authentic the gold became. The Europeans then took this Arabized word qirat and Latinized it to karat. Up next are two words, cipher and zero. I believe the word zero is self-explanatory, but for those who haven't heard of the term cipher, the Oxford Dictionary defines it as a secret or disguised way of writing, semicolon, a code, colon, cryptic notes in a cipher. And it could also mean zero. Today, the term is mostly used in computer programming and algorithms. Both terms come from the Arabic word sifr, which according to Joseph W. Mary, was the Arabic term to mean empty place, which Muslim mathematicians took to mean zero, a number which they took from the Indian mathematicians. On to more astronomical terms, zenith and nadir. For those who don't understand the terms, the zenith is the highest point and the nadir is the lowest. Here is an example of both terms used in a diagram of the Earth's celestial sphere. 
Zenith comes from the Arabic term Samat al Ras, and the Nadir comes from the Arabic Nazir al Samat. According to Kelly and Malone, like a lot of these Arabic terms, they passed on to Europe through Islamic Spain, back to elements and minerals, Rielga and arsenic. Rielga is an arsenic mineral with a melting point of around 308 degrees Celsius. It has been used to make red paint or dye, and used for decor. It has also been used to create fireworks, although such fireworks are restricted in purchase in the United States of America, according to Morsella and Conkling. This word comes from the Arabic Rahaj al-Ghar, meaning mine powder or cave dust. But what's an arsenic? This is a chemical element with the symbol AS on the periodic table. It comes from the Arabic term azranikh to mean gold coloured. And finally, tariff. The word tariff was once commonly known to refer to the table of arithmetics. However, over time, the meaning had become to mean tax or duty to be paid on particular imports and exports. Here in the UK, the word today is commonly used when discussing the monthly packages of mobile phones. The word originally comes from the Arabic word arrafa, to notify, which was then passed on to Europe via Italian and became known as tarifa, then to French, and then finally English. Final thoughts. In 1258, the Mongols invaded Baghdad, and amongst the many things they destroyed was the House of Wisdom, or Library of Baghdad. Sadly, the books inside the library were taken out and thrown into the Tigris River, turning it black momentarily. Which does make me wonder, could this mean that there are other mathematical and scientific terms that we use today, whose etymology is linked to Islamic civilization? If you like this video, please remember to like and share, and do subscribe to the channel for more Islamic history. While you're here, why don't you watch some of our other videos? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.